and we'll see port 53 and 5353. But most importantly is this right here, which is the system D resolve. That is what is being used for DNS to resolve domain names. But we need to free up port 53 because that's where we want to run our own DNS server. Okay, great. So now we have the DNS server running on our, that's going to be 238. And I'm just going to hit save and then it's going to reboot my router. So I'm just going to give that a second and then that way we can go ahead and see. All right, guys, we have both of them set up. Welcome to part two of my DNS series. So in the last video, I set up Pihole and AdGuard Home using the Docker VLAN network. And that made it so that there weren't any port conflicts with port 53 and I could have AdGuard Home and Pihole running at the same time. I could set my router to switch between the two if I wanted to because they each have their own IP address, which is really cool with, about the Mac VLAN network. However, it is pretty complex. So in this video, I do just want to show you how to run either Pihole or AdGuard Home on the bridge network on Docker so that it's running on your actual server's IP address. And basically I'm gonna help just resolve the conflict with port 53. So without further ado, let's go ahead and set up Pihole and AdGuard Home on our server on its IP address using the Docker Bridge Network. All right. Okay, I'm already logged into my server here. I'm using the same server as I used before with the Pihole and AdGuard Home running on the Mac VLAN network. You can see we have that Docker Compose file, but we're gonna start from scratch. Now, the first thing that I do want to do is let's just see what happens when we do an NS lookup of google.com. So let's try that now. NS lookup, google.com. So we can see that we get the IPv4 address for google.com and the IPv6 address for google.com. And we can see that we're using the systemd resolve running on port 53 on the server. So we know that everything's working. Our server can resolve domain names to IP addresses. So we know what that state is right now before we start kind of messing with anything. Now, the next thing I want to do just before we start modifying anything is actually just check what, if anything, is running on port 53. That is the port that's needed to run our DNS server on, as we'll see with our Docker Compose file. To do that, let's run a sudo ss dash tulnp pipe grep 53 like that and we'll see port 53 and 5353 but most importantly is this right here which is the system d resolve process that i mentioned that is running on port 53 we can see that that is what what is being used for dns to resolve domain names but we need to free up port 53 because that's where we want to run our own dns server so to do that let's modify the configuration of our systemd resolved. So we're gonna sudo nano and then go to etc systemdresolved.conf and scroll on down. So we are going to uncomment the DNS stub listener and set that to no. And then for, we want to actually go ahead and set an upstream DNS server, or this is how I want to do it for my server. What I mean is that all of our network is going to be using our pie hole on our server, but let's say we bring our pie hole down. We still want our server to be able to resolve DNS and um, we can always specify our server's IP address for DNS within Docker containers. All that to say is that I'm going to set DNS directly to either Cloudflare or Google. And I'll go ahead and set it to the Cloudflare 1.1.1.3, which is their DNS for families server. And that uh, blocks a lot of malware as well as adult content. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that as our upstream DNS server. And then the fallback is 1.0.0.3. So let's go ahead and write this out. And then let's do a sudo system ctl daemon reload. And then let's restart these. And then let's do a sudo system ctl restart system d resolved. Okay, so let's see if we still have anything running on 53. And we don't. We just have the 5353. That's we don't care about that. But 
The important thing is that system D resolved is no longer taking up port 53. Now let's see if we can still do an NS lookup for google.com. And you can see that now we are using that upstream Cloudflare DNS server, and we are getting an IP address for google.com. So we still can connect to the internet from our server, didn't mess anything up, and now we can actually run Pi-hole. So that's awesome. Let's go ahead and clear this up. So I'm gonna do Pi-hole and I'm gonna do AdGuard Home because they're both super popular. And let's go ahead and just start with Pi-hole. And again, Pi-hole has great documentation. We'll just search Pi-hole Docker and we should go right to the Docker documentation and we get a nice compose file right here. So let's go ahead and copy this guy and let's create a docker compose dot eml file and paste that in there. And the only thing really that we need to do is just change the port mapping for HTTP and HTTPS, or you can use one or the other, depending on if you have a reverse proxy going here. I'll just keep both uh, ports open. So let's use some port mapping like how about 70 88 and 7089 and then 53 53 we're going to keep those running like that okay i'm going to change the time zone real quick while i see this so denver america and then we'll just keep the password at default and then our volume is going to persist right in the relative path of etc pi hole so that looks totally fine and we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and do a, well, let me go ahead and CD over to Pi Hole. And because I've already uh, pulled the image before, I'm just gonna go ahead and re-pull it. So let's do a Docker compose or pseudo Docker compose pull. And you know, make sure we're getting the, the latest version here. And then let's do a pseudo Docker compose up D. And let me just check out that IP address of my server by typing IP address. And I'm gonna see that it's right here. So it ends with 238. I'm just gonna copy and paste this. And I'll go to the uh, HTTP port first, 7088, I believe it was. And then let's just go to the, uh, click that link. And then here we go, we're, we're right in here. Let's also try the 7089. And we need to specify HTTPS like that, and then go to advanced, proceed, and here we go. But now we're on HTTP, HTTPS. Now, it says not secure just because this is a self-signed cert, so it just by default, the browser does not trust the cert, but this is the more secure way, obviously, to connect to your Pi hole using the HTTPS. Now I'm gonna go in here and copy that password and throw that in here and log on in. Okay, great, so now we have the DNS server running on our network. Now to actually set our own network router to use this DNS server, you need to connect to your own router's admin screen. Now most routers have a specific IP address that you would navigate to. You can just kind of Google whatever your manufacturer router is and see what that IP address is. Because I'm using an Eero, I actually have to use the mobile application to manage my router settings. So I'm just gonna open up my Eero app here. It's gonna be the same process no matter what your router is basically, but I'm gonna be using my mobile app here. This is just specifically for my own Amazon Eero router. So I'm gonna go to my network settings and then I'm gonna go to DNS and then I'm going to modify the IPv4 primary DNS server. And I'm gonna match it to the IP address of my server running Pi-hole here. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's gonna be 238. And I'm just gonna hit save. And then it's gonna reboot my router. So I'm just gonna give that a second. And then that way we can go ahead and see those queries stacking up here into Pi-hole. So I'll wait a couple minutes and come right back. Okay, and as we can see, my Pi hole here is now being used as the DNS server for the network running on port 53 of my actual server here. So this is looking great. I'm not going to go over everything here in Pi hole. I just want to show you how to get it set up. A um, couple things really. You can go to the, uh, the list here and add any additional block list that you want. 
Obviously, you can monitor all the DNS queries on the network, uh, as well as the queries that are actually being blocked. And then the uh, big thing that we'll get to later on are the local DNS records. So here's where we'll actually be able to set up domains that can route to local IP addresses on our network, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so let's set up AdGuard Home now. I'm gonna go ahead and create another folder here for AdGuard Home. Okay, and then obviously we're gonna create another Docker Compose .yaml file. Go ahead and just do a Google search for AdGuard Home Docker. And then here, I believe they just give you the Docker run command, which is fine and all. Obviously, I prefer running things with Docker Compose because it just it's just so much easier than dealing with the actual Docker images. So I'm just going to copy this and go to the ittools.tech site. And then we're just going to search Docker run to Docker compose converter and just paste that in there. And now we actually have a decent Docker compose file. Now, on my website, I have comments in here that explain what each of these ports are for. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my own website. So if I go to thomaswildtech.com slash blog, I'll see the uh, setting up AdGuard Home and PyHole on the bridge network. I'm just going to go ahead and go here. And then I'm going to go to this second one right here. And then I'm just going to copy this Docker Compose file. So you can see I have comments on here on what all of these port mappings do. So we know which ones we actually need and don't need. So let's go ahead and paste that in here. Now we are obviously going to need port 53, but I'm not going to be using this as a DHCP server. I'm fine with my router doing that. We do need the uh, initial web interface, and then I'm just going to keep that same port for the web interface. I don't really need 433. This doesn't come with its own self signed insert. You'd have to do it yourself, so I'm not too worried about that. And then we're not going to be using these ports for uh, DNS over TLS. We're going to be using upstream. Uh, DNS servers that we are going to configure. So that's really all I need. We just need the web interface and we need the DNS server. So let's go ahead and take PyHole down. Do that with a sudo docker compose down on PyHole. Okay, so I took PyHole down. That's the DNS server for my whole network. Obviously, I still need my, D my server to be able to resolve domain names. So that's why we, we set those upstream servers to Cloudflare. Now let's go ahead and CD over to add guard home. And then let's also just do a pull first and then I'll do an up. So let's do a pseudo docker compose pull. And I just made sure I think it was probably already pulled from my last demo. And then we'll do an up D. Okay, so let's now hop over to port 3000. We go here. And we are at the welcome to AdGuard home. Just go get started. We're going to keep our web interface at port 3000. DNS server should stay at 53. And then let's go next. Do Thomas, password, hit next. Okay, hit next and open dashboard. So let's go ahead and sign in. And let's see if we start to get some DNS queries. So let's test this out by doing a NS lookup of google.com. And now we can see that we're getting the IP address of our AdGuard home here. So let's just do a Google search for Thomas Wild Tech and go to my site here. And let's just see if we start seeing those records pop in here. So I do. And you can see that uh, that's my IP address of my PC here. So I know that that is working now on AdGuard Home. All right, guys, we have both of them set up. Uh, in the next video, we are going to do more with actual DNS rewrites and creating our own domain names um, and also getting our tail scale network to use our DNS server too. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, you can show thanks by hitting that subscribe button. It'll definitely help me out, help out this channel and uh, hope to see you in an, a later video. We're going to be going over tail scale DNS and also DNS rewrites, having our own DNS records on our own DNS servers. So. Hope you stick around and I'll see you in the next video. All right.